Should you rent a car when you come to Costa Rica? Well, over the last few weeks, I've driven from top to bottom and from coast to coast and have learned a few things along the way. Today, I'm gonna to share the highs, the lows, the dangers, and the costs, so you can decide if renting a car makes sense for you. Oh, that is so <sighs> Hey, I'm Don, and I make videos about the world's coolest places to stay, along with travel guides to the world's most exotic destinations. I've been to Costa Rica three times, including twice this year, so with five weeks of driving in Costa Rica under my belt, I've learned a lot, and also had a few surprises along the way. Today, I'll share what I've learned and the mistakes that I've made to help you plan your trip with confidence. I'll cover the difference between driving in wet and dry seasons, the huge variety of road conditions here, dangers, accidents, should you pay extra for that 4x4, how to save money and avoid getting ripped off, how ferries and tolls work, and I'll end with the best thing about renting a car here. The biggest factor that will impact your decision on whether to rent a car and what type of car to rent is the difference in getting around Costa Rica in the wet versus dry season. Dry season is December to April and wet season is May to November. I went to this remote resort in the mountains twice. Let me show you the same road first in wet season then dry season. This is near Las Castellinas. Another river, my fourth one in like 15 minutes. Um, I don't have a car in front of me to show me the way. Um, this is right. Oh my God, that wall. I love how like there's you're know, like trying to like figure out how to cross the river. It's like I don't know which way I should go, and there's like people behind you beeping. So obviously a local who's done this thousands of times, and it's no big deal. But like when you don't know what you're doing, you're like, hey, could you not beep at me for a second? Let me figure this out. Here's the same crossing, but now during the dry season. It's not bad at all, actually. For Costa Rica, this is not bad. Even in dry season, there are parts of Costa Rica where a 4x4 can be nice to have. But in the wet season, I wouldn't try this without a 4x4. In a couple minutes, I'll cover what parts of Costa Rica you don't need a 4x4 in. But you haven't seen anything yet. The biggest problem I had during the rainy season was that both Google Maps and Waze navigated me right into rivers, with no indication that there was any river to cross. I can't imagine this even being crossable in the dry season. This is where Google Maps took me. <laughs> I mean, this is not, I mean, this is a freaking river. Look at this. How am I supposed to get over there? But it looked impossible in the wet season. To make matters worse, I was in the middle of nowhere with no cell signal. All right, what's your name, Erickson? Erickson, yeah. Erickson, hi, say hi. Yeah. We'll put you on YouTube, how's that? No worries, okay. <laughs> I charge more. <laughs> you charge more. Yeah. Uh, so Erickson is gonna, uh, I could go turn around and go a different way and it's gonna take an hour and 40 minutes. And uh, this way it's 40 minutes. So uh, I think it's worth 40 bucks. Uh, so he's gonna take me across three rivers and I have no idea how we're gonna get across the first one because it looked, I mean, it looked like a serious river, but um, we'll see. You're confident, yeah? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no problem. Here we go. Look at this. Looks like the freaking Amazon. Good job. Are you, are you? So even in the dry season, you could get in trouble in, uh, on that river? Yeah, if you make something wrong, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard to tell, right? Because you just, it all yeah, kind of looks the same. Recommendation, if you arrive to the new area for you or or something like that is, if you don't know nothing, just don't, just don't try it. Don't take risk. It. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is another, this is not a small river. And by the way, the rental car companies will tell you when you pick up your car, if you cross a river like this and get in trouble, it's your problem. I'll cover the rental car company's do's and don'ts a bit later. Wait, are you taking it or am yeah. I? 
Pura vida. Okay. Thank you so much. Pura vida. All right. I really appreciate it. Now, so you save you save me. You save me a lot of time. I really appreciate it. So she is going to take him back on the motorcycle, and they're going to take that through the river. And I'm sure they've done it a thousand times. The other big thing to consider is the wildly different road conditions around Costa Rica. Some roads are world-class and others not so much. And there are lots of in-between type roads too. My advice is to ask your hotel or Airbnb host. They should be able to give you detailed info about driving conditions and how to get to where you're staying. And if you want to know where to stay, check out my videos about Costa Rica's best luxury resorts premium resorts, and if you're on a tight budget, my video about Costa Rica's best bargain resorts. Places that are both affordable and super stylish. But let's get back to driving in Costa Rica. Here are some rules of thumb. The roads around the capital of San Jose are very good, but traffic can be bad. There's also this toll road that goes out in a few different directions around San Jose. The volcanoes region north of San Jose has generally good roads. I didn't have any problems here. I think it's safe to say that the Nicoya Peninsula has the worst roads. This is where you'll find the popular surf towns of Nassara and Santa Teresa. There's just no good roads that go down the coast. Some are paved, but many are super bumpy dirt roads, and this is where you'll have the greatest risk of Google Maps leading you to an uncrossable river. The roads from Liberia Airport to the Papagayo Peninsula are some of the best. If you're headed to a Papagayo resort, you won't need a 4x4. When I drove to the Caribbean side, the roads were generally good too. A mix of highways in the mountains from San Jose to close to the coast. Once you hit the coast, then there are these smaller paved roads. I also drove over the mountains from the Pecuari Lodge in central Costa Rica to the Osa Peninsula in the far south. All paved, but windy and misty in parts. I'd avoid this at night. Once we got to the remote Osa Peninsula, past Porta Jimenez, it's almost all dirt roads that can be very bumpy. I'd recommend a 4x4 for this area. And the roads down and around Uvita are generally quite good, but what I found in Uvita, and this applies to most parts of Costa Rica, is that many resorts are up on a hill. So you get these fab sea views, but you have to make your way up some really steep dirt roads to get that view. So you might not need a 4x4 until the last mile. But if you need to go up a road like this, you'll be glad you got that 4x4, especially in the wet season. Also, I'd count on lots of mud in the wet season and dusty roads in the dry season. Most of the tolls you'll hit are around San Jose. Stay in these lanes and avoid these, as most rental car companies don't include a fast pass. Tolls tend to be very cheap, usually about one US dollar, and you can usually pay in cash, and I was surprised when they even accepted USD cash. You can also pay with a credit card as long as it's not Amex, and at many tolls you can even tap to pay. There are not many ferries in Costa Rica to deal with, but the most important ferry is the Punta Reinas Pecuara Ferry. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but you'll probably use this ferry if you're going to or from the southern part of the Nicoya Peninsula. There are eight sailings each way per day, and the ride across takes about 70 minutes, but allow at least 15 minutes on each end for loading and unloading. The ferry holds 170 cars and 700 passengers, but is rarely full. You can buy tickets in advance online. I've linked the official website in the description. An advanced booking is a good idea during busy holiday weeks like Christmas, New Year's, and Easter. The first time I bought a ticket in advance online, the second time I just showed up 30 minutes before departure and bought a ticket on the spot. On board, there's a place to get coffee and food. You can sit inside where there's air conditioning, but we opted for this mostly shaded outdoor space. This is where all the fun people hang out. Ah! 
On the other end of the spectrum is the world's smallest ferry. In this case, Google Maps did warn me that there is a ferry, but my friend Maria and I never imagined it would look like this. And we're off. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Fastest ferry departure ever. <laughs> we're already moving. I think that took about 10 seconds between the time I got on and we started going. It's really funny. Gas stations are easy to find and most take credit cards, even Amex. In terms of staying safe, your biggest risk is passing slow-moving vehicles. There's a lot, and cars coming the other direction trying to pass. A few people are happy to pass on curves too, so please don't do that. My advice is try not to travel at night, and this is especially true going through the mountains. Another risk is one-way bridges. I learned this the hard way. What a f***ing idiot. You decide whose fault it was. As we started across this bridge, I couldn't see anything else coming. And that's the thing. On many bridges, you can't see the other side. It's just a risk you have to accept. Not much you can do when the other driver is drunk texting. Anyway, the damage was minor and the other driver fled the scene, but Budget Reynolds didn't care it wasn't my fault. Even after I showed them proof. They said I should have called the police and gotten an accident report from the court. Never mind, I had no cell reception and we were in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, if this happens to you, it's probably a good idea to get a police report if you can. I'll talk about car rental scams a bit later. If you're still on the fence, maybe the best reason to rent a car and drive yourself is the serendipity that can result. <laughs> this lady was like, uh, See. she's gonna wave me down at the bridge and I didn't know what she wanted. See. I thought she needed right directions, but she needed a ride. And so I just ran up, picked up some random stranger. But anyway, she seems really nice. So. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> Casa. That's okay. <laughs> Bueno, papi. Ah, okay. Nice to meet you. Que yo lo acompañe. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Bueno. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Okay, bye-bye. Ciao. That was honestly, that was a first for me. I have uh, never just booked up a random stranger. Uh, she just kind of got in the car and um, she looked harmless enough and she was harmless enough. Very sweet lady. Um, really testing my uh, 27 words of Spanish there. So that brings me to the saving money and not getting ripped off part of this saga. My best advice is if you decide to rent, to use Alamo. And by the way, this is not sponsored advice. Anyway, I've done my homework and they seem to be the most reliable. And I had a great experience with them. There's a booking link below. Although the name's Alamo, it's a local owner and they seem to be very conscientious people. Hertz and budget are a different story. There are also local franchises, and after looking online, I realized many people had the same complaints as me. You reserve one type of car, they tell you they are out of stock of that car, and try to upsell you a more expensive option, and try to scare you into more expensive insurance. The guy from Hertz took me next door to his buddy at Budget, who had the 4x4 I had reserved, but at a stupid price. This also happened to someone else at the same time when I was picking up my rental. In terms of insurance, Costa Rica car rental companies will make you purchase basic liability insurance, which covers damage to third parties, but not to the rental car itself. This cost is often not mentioned when you get a quote online and runs from 10 USD, that's what I paid at Alamo, to 25 bucks a day, that's what I paid at budget. You may be able to reduce your insurance costs if you print out proof that your credit card or car insurance company covers third-party damages. But most car rental companies will insist on seeing proof, so print it out before you leave home. Collision damage waiver and theft protection are legally not required, but not a bad idea. But to save on these, check if your personal auto insurance covers international rentals. Some do and some don't or if your credit card provides rental car insurance. 
My Platinum Amex covered me for a damage to my rental car in Norway. One more option is to buy travel insurance that also includes car rentals. Often that's cheaper than the crazy insurance costs rental companies try to talk you into. And here's a pro tip. Because you can book a car in advance and not pay any deposit, before you pick up your car rental, you can talk to the other car rental companies and see if you can get a better deal. At the Liberia airport, there's this car rental center. And at the San Jose airport, these car rental counters right outside baggage claim. So should you rent a car in Costa Rica? The best reason is the freedom to go where you want, when you want. But if you're going to a beach resort and not leaving, or a beach town where you can walk most places, the rental car will sit around most of the time, so probably not. Whether you should rent a car, and if so, a 4x4 or a regular sedan, all comes down to how far you're going from the airport, what type of resort or town you're staying in, if you're in an Airbnb and need to go to the store or go out for dinner, how remote is your hotel, and your budget. Despite the accident and getting jerked around by budget, I'm really glad I rented a car here. I got to see so much of this beautiful country, searching for Costa Rica's coolest places to stay. If you like to stay in unique places when you travel, then check out my 25 videos about each of my Costa Rica stays. Or start here with my five favorite premium resorts. Thanks for watching and see us in the next video.